So today I've got something really unusual to bring you, and that is the GamePad Digital Mobile Gaming PC. The reason why this is so unusual is the fact that it is a full Windows 10 machine, but in something the same size as a Nintendo DS. Now you may be wondering why that's exciting, and that is because it means technically you should be able to play your favourite PC games on the move. So the purpose of this video is to look at some of the key features to see whether they meet your expectations, especially if you are looking to purchase this. And as usual, I have left chapter markers in the description. So it does come in quite a nice package. Now the first thing you will notice is the Windows 10 key. That's something that you will need to keep if you do decide to buy one of these because you'll use it later on. And there is the gaming tablet itself. Now if you remove that tray, you will find a screen protector and really nicely boxed individual accessories, including some fake Apple earpods, but they do look really good to be honest. A USB Type-C to USB-A charge adapter. In my case, I ended up with a USA plug, and as you can see, that charges at 2.5 amps. And you will get the basic accessories, including a operation manual in colour and in English, which is quite nice, as well as a quick start guide. So looking at it, it doesn't look too impressive. It's just a pile of black plastic. In fact, you'd probably mistake it for a much cheaper, much nastier device. But actually, when you start looking at the specs of this and seeing what's inside, it shapes up to be a pretty impressive machine. So this has the Intel Atom Z8700 processor, as well as four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, a 64 gig eMMC memory uh, ROM, and it has a 5.5 inch display, as well as a battery, a fan, a full keyboard, and gaming inputs. Um, so on the back, you have all of your connectivity input devices. So on this side, you have the USB type C data and charge port. So you can plug in to the mains adapter, which is, I think the leave charges at 2.5 amps. So if you aren't using the charger that comes with this, make sure your device is capable of charging at that amount. Or you might find that if you're charging and playing at the same time, that your battery drains. It also has a mini HDMI port, uh, which I wasn't able to test because I don't have a mini HDMI adapter, I only have micro ones. It also has a micro SD card slot, which you will need if you're installing multiple games because the 64 gig ROM does fill up very quickly. You also have a USB type A port, which is really handy for plugging in any of your full size accessories. And it also has a headphone jack, which I prefer to use because I find that the speakers on this are okay. Um, but as you can see, they're on the side here. So while you're using them, uh, you do tend to find that actually you, you cover up the speakers and it stops everyone around you being annoyed. Now on the bottom, you do have a fan switch. So this has three modes. One is off. So you just, if you're just browsing or, or light use, um, on Windows, then it's fine to have it off. The heatsink will work fine. You have a sort of middle fan, which is a quiet fan. So it's just running, it's just pushing, you know, dissipating a little bit of the heat. And then you have the full fan, which is a little bit noisier, but not really noisy at all. So if you're in a quiet room, yes, you're gonna hear it, but if you've got you know, the TV on or you're out and about, then you're definitely not gonna be able to hear the fan, but you can feel it because the air comes out of this uh, intake hole here, um, or it's an exhaust hole, I'm not really too sure. Uh, but overall, it's quite an impressive little piece of kit on the outside. And when you open it up, you do have a lot of stuff going on. So you've got a full QWERTY keyboard here, as well as your joysticks, you have a standard D-pad here, and you have your buttons. All of them feel really good. Um, you also have the Xbox and PlayStation logos in the corner. I don't know whether you'll be able to see that. Um, but it's a really, really well thought out little device. You also do have your trigger buttons on the other side. So you've got L1, L2, R2, R1, um, which 
they're good. You know, the actual mechanism's good, but the buttons are a little bit flimsy. That would be probably my major concern on this, is how long will they last? But so far they seem to have done quite well. They're quite springy. And on the inside, you have this little switch as well, which controls the type of input you're going to use. So at the moment I've got the mouse, um, which means I can control the mouse across the screen and I can use the L2 as left click and the R2 as right click. And that works really well. And on here, you can switch to the Xbox style controller and you can switch to the older style direct input controller. So it's, you know, it's, it's really good. It's really well thought out. So it'll work with a wide variety of software and games. The only thing that I do find really annoying um, is the R3 and L3 are down here. So they're also trigger buttons, but they're, they're sat down here, which is really annoying. And you tend to find that some games that, you, that require this, it's easier to remap it to the keyboard because once you're, once you're truly in a game and then you have to take your hand off the joystick to come around because you can't physically get your finger up here. You also have your volume, which is another useful thing to have here. And you have the Xbox button. So if you are using it through Xbox games, um, this will work really well. So I was actually more impressed with the display than I originally thought. It has a 5.5 inch 720 display. The colors are really good. It's an IPS display, so the viewing angles are quite nice. Um, it's also got multi-touch support and it has Gorilla Glass, so it is gonna be quite scratch resistant. I also find it's quite accurate. So when you are going through the menus, it's not too difficult to use, but as you can see, you know, my fingers are quite slim. So when you are trying to touch on things, it isn't the easiest in the world, but it is doable. Um, and all in all, quite impressive. So using Windows, I find quite fiddly. Because of the 5.5 inch display, you tend to find that you're using the joystick a lot more. But generally, when you're actually using some of the apps that are pre-installed, it's, it's all right, it's not too bad. It's not something I'd want to do every day, but if you're doing a quick spot of browsing, in my case, I was looking up some walkthroughs of certain sections of the games I was using, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's all right, it's not too bad. One thing I will say about the Intel Atom processor is it's quite, you know, snappy. So running something like Microsoft Edge, which can be a pain on some of the other tablets uh, that I've used before, actually works quite well with the four gigabytes of RAM and the, you know, the up to 2.5 gigahertz processor. It's actually quite a nice experience. Um, and the great thing is as well, as this, this comes with dual band Wi-Fi. So this does actually come with uh, AC. So some tablets that I've used before, you have very limited download speeds with the um, with the antennas being quite short or with it just being um, N. But I actually find on this, it you know, it, it is quite snappy. So I'm just going to run a quick speed test to show you how quick it is. And just in comparison, normally in this room uh, on a wireless N single band, I will get probably 14 to 25 gig download, uh, sorry, meg download, and I'll get around about 20 meg upload. So let's give this a go. So as you can see, um, I'm using the full capability of my broadband. My broadband is actually capped at 70 meg, um, but as you can see there, it's it's got a slight difference on there. Um, but downloading ridiculously quick. So if you do plan on using this for online gaming, or if you've got um, you know, a Steam server that you're gonna run your games from, this is easily gonna be able to handle it. So, you know, I was I was pretty impressed uh, for what this can deliver, and I actually found it quite useful for when I was browsing the internet. I was actually coming to this uh, more than I was my sort of day-to-day -day tablet because of the speeds and how quickly the page loads. So when it comes to gaming, this thing is actually pretty decent. Now, when you do install a, a sort of more modern game, like I've installed Bioshock Infinite, now I think this is 2013, uh, one thing you'll immediately notice is the back starts to get hot. 
So the first thing I would recommend doing is turning on that fan uh, to the full speed. And you will also need to tell the device um, what controller you want to use. So in this case, I'm going to use the Xbox controller and that should immediately uh, yeah, be recognized by the system. So we're just going to go through a little bit of gameplay. Uh, you won't be able to see very well in the corner, but I do actually have the frame rate running. So I'll try and give you an update as we go through. But one thing I have had to do is set the graphics as low as possible, uh, but it still actually gives quite, uh, you know, quite a nice uh, resolution for something of this size. I imagine if you were putting this on a monitor um, or a large TV, then yeah, fair enough. It, it probably wouldn't look too good, but on something this size, it works quite well. So overall gaming on this is quite nice. Uh, the joystick feels really good. Uh, the triggers on the back, like I said, aren't too much of an issue. They are a bit flimsy, but the actual mechanism is quite nice. Um, you do find that when you're playing something like this, and bearing in mind this is, you know, four, three, four years old now, the frame rates are around, you know, anywhere from 30 to about 18, 16 frames per second. So not the best in the world, but definitely still playable. The only thing that you will find with this is that it does get hot. When you are doing sort of fight scenes with multiple enemies rendered, um, it does take its toll on the processor and that will actually slow down the frame rate because the way these things work uh, to stop themselves from overheating, they will actually throttle down uh, the hotter they get. So the best thing to do at that point, and I'm talking, you know, a good half an hour, 40 minutes into the game, you might just want to stop for just a minute. It will cool down rather quickly and you'll see your frame rate fly straight back up again. Um, you may be able to hear the audio on this. It sounds okay. Uh, let's turn this up. Uh, but when you are holding it properly, it does muffle it quite a bit. So I tend to find that I, I reach out quite far or the easiest way to do it is just to put in some headphones. But you know what? You know, I'm playing a full PC game on something that I can hold in one hand. So it's, it's, it's so impressive, it's so good. I'm really surprised how much I like this. And yeah, fair enough, if you are into your gaming specs, you might look at this and go, mm, yeah, well, you know, 18 frames a second or 20 frames a second uh, is not too good. But you know what, if you do get this, you won't be disappointed. It's, it's what you wanted as a kid, and now you do actually get to have it. And on that note, let's go to the bit that I love the most about this. So that brings me to the real reason why I have one of these. Now I, I, I love general PC gaming, I love anything that's quite geeky and gadgety, but the main reason if you're going to get this is for retro gaming. So I've installed RetroArch on this and I'm just going to show you exactly the reason why um, I got hold of this. Now, I've installed my games on the micro SD card, um, but I do have Zelda Ocarina of Time um, and a, a whole host of other N64 games. Um, for me, this was the best ever console and the ability to be able to have that on something that I can take away with me and hold in my hand. Actually, if you're a, if you're a fan of Ben Heck, he's currently making a portable version of the N64. So he's going through the trouble of actually converting one, but it still won't be as good as this because you've got the full functionality, you've got all the games in one tiny package and on something like this you can install hundreds, thousands of games on SD cards and you've got the full functionality. So as you can see on here you have to get used to the controls. So on the left is the main joystick, here is actually where you control your C buttons and here is obviously your your main A and B buttons. And on the back, you've got your Z targeting. And the great thing about running something like this is the device doesn't get too hot. So I can play this for a good, you know, three or four hours. I get, I get well into this game and you find that it's only at that point is it starting to get a bit too hot to touch. So, you know, you stop for a couple of minutes or you put the fan on high, wait for it to cool down and then carry on. In fact, I tend to drain the battery 
um, extremely quickly playing these sorts of games. Well, it feels really quickly, but it's not. It's a good few hours in. I find playing something like this, the battery will last about about two and a half hours, three hours before I really have to charge it, sometimes a little bit longer. If I'm playing something like Bioshock, then, you know, you're talking two hours battery life. And it takes about a good, I don't know, four, five hours to charge up the battery again. Uh, a couple of times it's been six hours, but that's where I've really drained it all the way to what must be, you know, zero. Um, but, you know, it's quite a respectable charge time compared to sort of tablets in a similar field because it has that 2.5 amps uh, charge capacity. But overall, if you're going to get it for any reason, get it just to be able to play, you know, your old childhood games because I promise you it'll be well worth it. So that brings me to the end of this video. I don't want to go too much in depth. There's plenty of videos out there if you want to see more gaming. Um, I was just kind of doing it from my point of view and the main reason why I buy one of these. I think it's an absolutely brilliant little device. Now, is it the cheapest? No, not really. One thing I have done is I've managed to get some voucher codes uh, for Gearbest and I will try my very best to keep them updated so you can get a few quid off. But if you are into your retro gaming, you want something to take away with you that's going to be easy, it's going to fit in your pocket, then you really, really have to try and get one of these. I really, I really, really do recommend it. Um, if you've got any questions, if there's anything that you want me to go through, then please leave them in the comment section below. I'll leave some links in the description to where you can go and buy this. I'll try and put a few more images on my website, so check that out. But otherwise, thanks for watching.